So now we're going to do some drill work that has helped uh, helped us talk about some of the different stuff that we're that we're trying to work through, which is balance. Some of it eliminating the back shift. Craig's going to show us a move that he's talking about, which is uh, what do you call it? The two hand two hand under. Yeah, just video. We'll see how uh, we'll actually get the hands in in time, but. I'll actually say it's it's inside a rotation. We're not going to rotate away from our hands. We're going to carry them on top of rotation. Yeah, with it. And so, and I know Doug will say, you know, the shoulders are, you know, supporting the move. It's not doing the move. And so we're going to get in, but we'll see on video that, you know, we're going to get in here, but we're also going to carry it here. And you can a lot of times see the hands, both hands underneath the front shoulder before the shoulders do it anything off direction. And so, um, a lot how, many, of, how many videos over the course of years I want you <laughs> posting? How many tens of thousands of videos do you think you've seen now? A lot. <laughs> so, I just, well, did, I had one person, one major leaguer that I assembled some video for who just over in one season I had 80 some videos of them just in one season. So, mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, that's one. Um, so there's a lot. But the reason to say that you've got a pretty good eye for looking at the highest level swings in the game. Yeah, and so it, all those guys getting off their best swing, that is just these eyes are seeing that. Mm-hmm. And when I see something different, I've you know I can I can see it now, and uh, it's just in my brain and my yeah, and so it's. It's in there. It's ingrained in there now. You know, I'm starting to see yeah. things more and more all the time because I know what it should look like. And when it doesn't, then, but then I can go, okay, why doesn't it? What was it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's neat now because when you think about it, because there's not a cookie cutter swing. Right. No hitter really has the same swing. There are simple dynamics that are consistent, but they don't look identical. And it, hitters do a little bit something different. And have yeah. a little character or personality or what I talked about, addressing how their body works right. to affect, you know, the path they want, the movement they want, the contact they want. But there's no H B C one, two, three, cookie cutting way to make a hitter. With I think we all agree with that. Right. We have to work within the framework of who that hitter is, what the body works at that point in time, new hitters are gonna grow. Right. You know, even big leaguers change. But there's not, this is the perfect swing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all like, man, that's a good swing. Well, so people ask me all the time with all the videos I've seen, who is your favorite? I, I don't I don't know. My favorite is the player's best swing. Yeah. Like, I just like good swings. I don't know if I, you know, it's not one hitter. I want the, any hitter to take their best swing. I love any hitter's best swing. That's my favorite swing. Isn't it funny to see that when you see, you know, a lot of times what's publicized is obviously the good hits, the home runs, the doubles, the game-winning hits. That's what's publicized. So we see a lot of similarity in those hits, in those swings. But for me, I want to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to see that in what is our consistency level and look at, okay, so what are the possible causes? And it's not going to be a swing. I don't fix swings. People are like, what? I don't fix swings. I fix setups. Because we start at setup. And whatever my setup is, is going to be different than yours and yours. And it might be different tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I might wear a pitch tomorrow and I can't move the same. So I might adjust. Because my body's not going to allow me to move the way I want to. So because I'm competing, I'm going to be in that lineup. I'm going to find a way to get it done. But I know I want to do this. So this is what I can do today. But for the most part, we can kind of stabilize and have a good idea what a standard setup is. But, you know, we talked about some people go into kind of a, a hinge. Some people are taller. You know, everybody has their little feeling. But those swings, when we see them working from here to here, that's where I see consistency. Mm-hmm. And I don't care who the hitter is. They're consistent from here to here. And how they get there might be a little different. How they finish might be a little different. Where that pitch was might be a little different, but that's where I look. That hand path, that line, the extension, the direction, those are the things I think are the most consistent, no matter what the swing total is. 
Would you agree with that? Well, it's, I'm, I'm thinking right now, it's really because you fix setup. So if we get in a good setup, it'll create a good first move. That yeah. move gets the balance and everything takes care of it itself <laughs> after that. And you're cleaning up stuff without directly saying, and a part that we don't have, we have feel when we set up. We have a feel on our first move, and then everything just happens. Yeah. Right? So you think, oh, okay. that looks cleaner, Yeah. but you cleaned up backwards yes. at this point. So why do kids pick their setups? Sometimes they copycat. Well, right. And Kate so, Griffey. Yeah. And so... How underrated then is the setup? I think <laughs> you're saying it's everything. I think it's everything because you look at and everybody moves and setups can change. But again, it all starts. We talk back to moving in balance and the moves we make. But they all start from someone. But if I don't have a good setup, then I'm not going to make the right first move, and then everything forward is a compensation, no matter who I pretend to be. Mm-hmm. But you know, as we talked about, some bodies work good from here. Some bodies have to get a little bit different uh, comfort levels. Um, make how they make space, um, how their body moves, but it, it has to start a set of this. We talked about, okay, let's adjust your hand to here. Oh, look how much nicer that is. You know, let's make this move rather than this move. Just mm-hmm. little pieces, but they're all based on how the body's going to move. It's not saying, okay, you need to get your bat there faster. And God forbid, I never want to see someone, let's swing harder. Mm-hmm. Because if I've got to swing harder, I'm grinding. And that's why I don't think a lot of these people that advocate you know, you know, swing hard, understand, I'm grinding. And if you're swinging hard, you're in your shoulders. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And if you're swinging hard, you're hitting in a small zone, and you have no adjustability. Good luck. That's why I never say, you know, swing hard or hit hard. Let's swing clean, free, fast, and the result is it comes off hard. Yeah. It'll take care of itself. Yesterday, we were doing some work, doing some flip work, mm-hmm. and you went from grindy big shoulders. All right. I'm so... And yeah. so I, I was basically starting here, and we already talked about shoulder line a little bit, and I was already offline. But with my hands being up here and being such a tight mover, like I'm, I'm just I'm, that's how I'm built. I'm short and I'm tight. So you were just talking about relaxing everything with within my setup. So instead of being you know hands high up here, and I started close or I started even. And just to open up just a little bit and open up my back foot to release some of that tension and just release everything in my shoulders. And then from there, everything just flowed better. And I was, I was actually able to see the ball a lot better. Which is a flaw. Absolutely. And it was almost effortless. And I was still hitting the ball the same as whenever I was really trying to, what I thought was create rotational speed and power. And what I was really doing is what you would call grinding and really getting a lot tighter than I thought. And I, I didn't think I was using my lower half, and you said that I was, but it didn't feel like that I was. Because the whole body was working together. Yeah. That's why it was effortless. Yeah. Right. And the, but the exciting thing was when when Jonathan hit the ball and he started doing this, I heard a different contact, which mm-hmm. means sound. sound was much better. Sound is beautiful. And feedback. the ball jumped. He wasn't trying to hit the ball hard, but the ball jumped. We had, I knew it at what we call late life or, you know, backspin. Or, late life, I like that. Yeah. You know, or a ball has legs. Yeah. You know, because they were now doing that without effort. Smooth, easy swing, covering the zone, and hitting the ball a lot better than if he was trying to manhandle it and, and grind it and swing hard. And but that sound is... It, it's can you got to learn, learn what sound... Learn, like... There will be times where I won't look at the hitter, and I'll just listen, and I can tell what's going on. But if you get the player to do that, if they can match that sound with that move, sometimes we'll have the loudest sound competition. And they're like, wow, I've, yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it. Well, if you can hear it, you're doing something right. we got to throw somebody under the bus here. I'd like to bring up Cody Atkinson, mm-hmm. yes. um, who's uh, now working in a, in a major league organization. And I shared with him one of the things we played with a little bit this year was decibels. And actually looking at what the meters were saying at contact and what were difference in sound. Because one thing I know is that not only is sound loud, but it's also long when we're hitting the ball. It's not this like, ha! It's, it's, it's a sound that we've all heard, 
And it's like, oh, that's what I want. Yeah. Um, I was in a, I was with an organization actually this off season, and you know hitters were going through some prospects were going through. And we actually touched one of the players, I guess from bias, and I was in a conversation, and suddenly sound changed, and all of us went, yeah. wow. And it's like, wow, that's better. It happened to be the, the guy we made. We took a back shift away, mm-hmm. and suddenly everybody whipped like, wow, because wow, listen to that. We haven't been oh. hearing that. These are like big prospects, mm-hmm. anyways. Now, everybody recognized that, mm-hmm. you know, and his coach is actually doing his front toss. And the coach goes, I had a ball last year. He never took swings. I never sound like that. So, again, we do inherently know, wow, what, what that sound means. Yeah, what, one thing I'll do is I'll, I'll set up the iPad and I'll film a hitter, and then I'll go edit it, um, cutting out the dead space. But instead of watching swings, mm-hmm. I'll listen mm-hmm. I'll pick the swing that I really want to look look for at or whatever just by the loudest ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll edit by the loudest ones and put a bundle of clips, highlight clips for the player mm-hmm. by the just the loudest sound. So we talk about technologies and coming in. That's one of the things that I'm thinking people are missing is using the decibel meter mm-hmm. and sound to tell us what's happening because that's also a result, and you can't fake it. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference when somebody manhandles the ball because that duration of the sound is different than when we're really hitting through the ball. So the there's a lot of things I think coaches and players can do that, you know, are sensory mm-hmm. rather than, you know, effective mm-hmm. from a movement standpoint. But then they can feel the result and understand it. You know, him having that better sound, it's interesting when he was doing his demonstration, is just to see these muscles Chops relax. just drop and loosen up. Mm-hmm. And, and he took, I mean, he's a strong guy, but you're stronger when everything works together. Right. I'm That's not the strong. Key. These are stronger than Yes. Yeah. But, but as a sense of, you know, it's like just human nature, you know, it's the peacock move. Yeah. You know, we want to get strong here, and it's just human nature. If I get surprised, I'm in my shoulders. Yeah. The key is being able to, like, just stay the course. You know, stay down, like, okay, even if I get surprised, I'm, I'm letting the A-swing go. I'm not trying to do anything more. Um, and just trying to control nature of reaction. Mm-hmm. And just, but, like we talked about the grind. The grind is always going to be going upstairs. And then, you know, like you said, if we have the top of the zone here... If I have to get into them, well, shut her down. Shut it down. You already you have a built-in sensory mechanism of your body that if I have to do something out of what I want to do, I need to. Well, at the major league level now, we're doing. We high, don't want to chase high this. spin rates up in the zone, and they're trying to throw there. Okay, and they're going to try to throw there. And the tough thing is distinguish from top of yeah, zone, yeah, where where the limits are. And suddenly you realize top of zone. And your optimal top. Yeah. And for you. Yeah. And you're sitting there thinking about, okay, so where am I at? Yeah. But if your body can tell you full, then that, that's one way to lay off price tough pitches. And this is where guys are going to pound guys this year. Okay. So again. And the shoulder move has the bat plane where it's right. coming. We're missing high to low all the time. And that's why we look at trying to, like I said, I'm an advocate, obviously, balance. But my shoulders need to stay very level in my move in order for me to have bounce because my shoulders go downhill. I'm going to fall. I'm going to rush. And I'm going to come in and out of the zone. I have yeah. to. Um, there are guys with a slight downward shoulder, that, but when they come down, they equalize. But I think the ideal is to, you know, to, I can keep my shoulders level, relax, and now all this energy here can now be fired through that line. And you have that soft settle in the back. Yeah, but again, it's not natural to us. Yeah, right. When it should be. We don't want to go, I mean, if you do have a down, you don't want to, but you can go down, soft, settle. And remember, every time we talk about the, you know, the good characteristics of a swing, there's variations on a theme that I will get away with. But that's what I want to do is I'm actually trying to keep a margin that I don't have to be perfect, Mm -hmm. but I've got a range of effective contact that I can get to that okay. I can hit home run from here and I can hit home from here. I can drive a ball X, Y, Z, but I need that range. Right. And that's why I'm saying, okay, so much. And you'll see it sometimes. You'll look at the video and the guy's not perfect, but he's able to affect contact. He's able to drive the ball. He did 450 feet. 
everywhere. There's a range. And we can eliminate the shift a little bit. Yeah. So we get the range. Yeah. And as long as I've got a range, that means I've got a margin. And remember, we're still going to fail. Mm-hmm. But we tell our guys, okay, you're going to miss. Miss with the ace way. And your miss hits become hits. Absolutely. How many miss hits are hits? And you need those miss hits. But absolutely, you're miss hitting because you're doing something really good on a tough pitch. Absolutely. Especially with two strikes. Yeah. And you look at, you can't constantly miss. talk to young hitters and say, hey, that's a good miss. And, you know, okay. They'll learn what a good miss is. To me, a good miss is, got to good position, and my energy was driving towards the pitcher. Yeah. And I felt like I was really going that way. Bad miss is when I'm, I feel that I'm already like spinning. Right. Um, and coming off the ball. And your miss is a three hopper to the, you know, to an infielder versus maybe a little bit of a miss here might get some carry out to some grass and then your miss hits a hit versus an out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so many, so many aspects of it. You know, that's why, like I said, I so much appreciate what you do to get information out and Craig, you're the man. Um, what are some of the other drills that you do that you think are very beneficial or even thoughts for, um, for, you know, we've talked a lot about this and there's a reason we've talked a lot about this because most hitters do that. So yes. how can we train that out? So what we'll do is we have a scissor series where we'll actually just start here and we'll just, it's just a simple, we'll, we'll be closed, no strike. But we're just working the path. Okay, and you can do this. I mean, you can do the one-handed drills. Um, you can do two-handed. But we're just trying to stay right here. And you can use that chalk line as a reference. And we're just hitting. And these could be 70% swings. They can be an underload bat. So we can just concentrate on this right here. Sometimes the overload, or underload bat, that'll reinforce our body that we don't need to do this. And so that we can get through here and train that direction a little bit. So we'll just take swings like this. Then we'll go and actually exaggerate that where we're really closed off. Um, and what we're going to try to do here is maintain our direction this way and try not to rotate. I'll tell hitters to just stay sideways. And so we'll go from here. Our hands will be parallel. They'll be low. And we're just working right there. Right there. So I'm trying to take the hand path right on that line. I'm trying to stay within my posture. I'm trying to work. So these are flips. These are flips right down the middle. And I'm trying to stay right here. Carry that through the ball and finish right through the middle of the field. One thing I like about that is also how the, you maintain head position and eye position. Yeah. And I think it's never said enough to most young hitters and coaches that when I make a move to 50-50, I see the ball better. Yeah. But the stability of that's also based on how your head relates to your spine. And if Jess will bring us a bat. Show the camera, if you will, some of the balance ideas you give to your players with using the bat as a reference point. Um, when I try to get guys to get to balance, try to go forward, they still want to, they think this is it. The reach. So, yeah, so it's a reach and tilt, and you can see the breakdown right here. And you see the shoulder line, you see the hip line, um, and we come off the back side. So we'll get them in a setup. I'll let them get in a setup. I'll say, this is your head, this is your spine. And so we're here, and I said, I want you to move your head and spine to here. And for some reason, this visual, they get this, so then they'll take their move right to here. I said, well, that's where you need to get to. That's your balance point, okay? We're making our forward move there. And from there, then, we just have to be able to get our hands to the baseball and make it really simple. I like Um, simple. Yeah. And so, or even on video, I'll do an overlay and I'll put a T. So there's, we have our line here, line here. So I'm trying to go T to T. T to T. You're going to notice, I mean, we are moving our head, but the thing is our head is moving with our body. Yes. Our head is on our spine. Our head likes being there. Yes, it does. And when it gets here or here, that's not natural. That's not how we're built. And so when we can go from here to here, yes, I'm moving forward. 
Yes, I'm moving down. But it's in a position that it's used to. And so that we can see the ball as we move to a better position and seeing the ball at the same time, we can do that because our head and our eyes are in a natural position. And like I said, we've, I think you've, we've used a term for 20 years, you know, moving into the staircase. Yes. And I like the staircase because we start in an angle and I can read if there's any movement away from that angle, I've got a bad move. Yeah. So I want to move from the staircase right into the staircase. Yes. Yeah. And it's natural. And so people have ask, how do I get in my legs? Well, I'm in my legs now. Yeah. I'm athletic. I'm in my legs. I don't need to be grindy. Right. You know, but that movement forward generates all that energy you're talking about, puts me in my legs, gives me an opportunity to use the posterior chain and do damage. Right. And that that third part of that drill is, okay, we've learned this. We've learned just hand path without trying to do anything here. we learned path, okay? And then now we're going to add body with path. Now we're going to see if we can go from a setup to here and maintain that line. And when you do it right, the ball just jumps. And guys will usually say, wow, I'm hitting the ball better here. And it's like, well, yeah, everything's going through the baseball. And you're sticking through it and you're hitting it clean. And there's no move, there's no counter move, there's nothing taking any energy off, off the ball. So we are going to get some rotational power, but we have to stay on that line at the same time. So it's a, it's that pocket of doing both together because we have to try to hit this there. So can I drive everything I have through the pitch line there without? Let's put a moment of clarification. And there's a lot of people use terminology or have used terminology, linear versus rotation. Yeah. And people have called me and said, well, you don't teach rotation. And I'm like, of course I do. And they're like, no, you don't. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think I know what I teach. But what I don't teach is spinning. Yeah. And what a lot of people mistake is, like I said, that, that the bane of every hitter is any time that hip opens first. And people say the hips open first. If you watch sequencing, it's how the body moves to make that happen. It's not getting here and then trying to turn my hips fast. Uh -huh. I'm in trouble. But that's spinning. And that's, con you know, the whole idea of dead leg. And the minute I squash a bug, I mean, where am I going? Right. And, and you spun because you never got to a good spot. I couldn't. And the good thing is I find when you get hitters to get to that 50-50, I'm going to probably make a better move because it's not easy to spin, which is an unnatural motion for the body. It doesn't want to do it. It's tighter here. And that's what I want because I want to be able to have a little resistance to get into it. Now, that move right there just opened my front hip because it started it. So now this can happen, not or this. Just the foot. Oh, the heel? Yeah. Oh, bad move or good move? Good move. Good move? I'm here. Yeah. And I've still got the inside part of my heel maintaining a kinetic chain to create that moment of drive. Sure. Now, you're talking things that happen in microseconds, mm -hmm. but they're there. Do they have to be perfect? No. There are guys at big league level, good hitters, and they're up. It happens. Mm -hmm. But they're also more dominant upper body hitters. Mm -hmm. But being able to get into a point where you can fire, why not teach it? And when he gets there, that heel's up in the spin. Energy's going to no, go down. Yeah. And we like to look at how long on microsecond frames, how long is that heel down, 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 then it pulls forward, yeah. uh -huh. you know, underneath or forward. Or you've actually seen hitters where they've got so much energy that you'll see this almost do this on the ground. Uh -huh. And then there is so much energy translated that way. And then you correspondingly go up and you realize they're not making a big body move. And as they hold that line, you'll see the foot come back a lot of times. You've got to have front side resistance to have a back side. And that's what's being taught out of a lot of our players. Because spin, get around the ball, you know, barrel to it, turn on the ball. These are really bad concepts. Uh -huh. um, we just try to push another, uh, I because we find a lot of young amateurs and even professional players that have front leg issues. Because when I spin, that front leg braces early. It goes early. And once it goes up, this goes up, I'm going to come off plane. When that leg braces, Play left, I have right, to go. and up and down. Yes. So what we're trying to do is say, okay, to work through that, they have to learn what we call a ride drill. So you've talked about riding. We talked about hitting on speed. We'll get them down here and sit them back here. So they're behind that. 
And then they have to swing and just feel that leg stay bent. And this looks easy, but if they've been spinning or doing bad drills, there's I've, I've got a young hitter's got this shoulder thing from it's it's scary because this kid's career is is jeopardized. But his shoulder is here, but that front leg automatically wants to go straight now. So just doing a right drill, he can't because of the way he's been wired. So we have a process with. You know, hitters of that, that it's going to take time to get them back because you can out, you can train athleticism out of a body. You can make guys very rigid, robotic, and unathletic. You can do it. And that's kind of what I see probably more normal, mm -hmm. which breaks my heart for hitters, than not. And yeah, great athletes figure a way to do it. But we've got to get online with the human body. But the right drill, Stay down and just learn to, it's not a scissor drill. It's really based on trying to feel what that front leg can do just so it doesn't snap up early. Well, that's fine for fastball. But then what? Because what, what yeah, I get down a fastball and I'm going. Yeah. But any breaking speed, or worse, oh, cutter. <laughs> My directions are I got no shot. Right? And I'm going to try and come around a cutter. I got to get through it too. And yet, God forbid if they throw a spin, I can't adjust to it. So a lot about moving and trying to get into things and working things just feels, but it's tough. And we've all had students that they get it like that. And then you have guys that are going to take a little bit of time. And I've learned, I can't assess what a hitter is going to be able to do. I've seen hitters come in on back of my hand like, oh boy, this might be tough. And first time in, bam, they're good. They're good. Locked in. Oh, I like this. Good. And then I've seen hitters of exceptional athletic ability are going, okay. It's like, we're going to grind it out. You know? So there's no way to put any hitter in a box. And every hitter has to be kind of on their own term. But what I like about you, Craig, you guys don't cookie cut. You're going to do this, this, and this, make this move, do this drill, and you're better. And we all have drills, and there's a ton of drills out there. And people can try any drill they want as long as it works within balance. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe we're going to be able to generate a little innovation where people are going to say, oh, I like this idea of the line. And there's nothing not to like about the idea of the line and how your body works in balance. Go out there and innovate. You know? But what makes me laugh a lot is you get somebody gets a device or a, a move or a one, two, three system and say, that's a be all end all. Right. And it never works that way. Right. Um, people have talked, asked me about weighted bats. You talked about underweight bats, and we use underweight bats, even mm -hmm. for big particularly for one-hand drills. Full-size underweight bats uh, we find really helpful. Um, my drawback to heavy bats, overweight bats is, generally speaking, the first thing we're trying to get away from is what? Control. And when you have a heavy implement, what are you going to be using? So... We do use some heavy bat training for more advanced players, but only if they know how to use their legs, because we want the leg support for that. And it's only conditional, very short, you know, uh, rate to maybe three to five, eight flips. Okay? And because we're not trying to create some idea of like bat speed or heavy acceleration to a contact point with a heavy implement, we're trying to create a body move that creates an effortless swing through a big song. But if we use a heavy bat, you can generally watch how much, be sure that if a hitter's shoulders start overreacting, we're in trouble. We're not leading that hitter down a good, good path. And I like, uh, so if a kid's using a high school kid, you know, it's a 3330 guy, I like putting a 3430 wood bat in his hands. Just the slight variation, a little length variation, makes and a weight difference. Huge. Yeah. Well, we've actually used, we're using, even, I would even use like a 35 or just to feel the length issue. But when you get these things that are counter counter loaded or or, or end loaded, yeah. because usually they concentrate the weight in the head, uh -huh. and that creates other dynamics. If I may, you know, a heavy the heavier the bat, more likely a young hitter is going to dump the barrel. They're yeah. going to drop the barrel, lose the barrel. If you lose the barrel, you've lost your front side. They work together. So again, as long as I keep it light, and I can make my first move. Then we can let the weight take care of itself as long as I'm not getting here. And then suddenly, 
contesting lake. Well, yeah, once you don't, if I have a pitch up here, i got to get back up. Good luck. And so I'm training the shoulder. Yeah. I've got to work here, and I can't dump the barrel. In fact, this is going to sound kind of sacrilegious, but I don't even care what the barrel does. People are like, what? I don't want to worry about what the barrel's doing up here. I'm going to get my hands in here, and then we'll all work together from here. Because if I try to articulate or control the barrel here, it's not going to work. But people have, people have been taught their whole lives. I'm not, get the barrel on the ball, get the barrel down on the ball. And we do start with the barrel above the hands. And as we get in the zone, I think they're going to take care of themselves. But the problem is, people articulate that to me. I don't know what they're trying to do, but keep that barrel above the hands. And I hate seeing anybody articulate the barrel because you cannot articulate that barrel without engaging your shoulders off plane. And I don't hit like this. I hit through the ball. And you just showed that move right there. Of the hands getting to the front. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>